Mark Pirro, the producer, director, and writer of The God Complex. The God uh, Complex is playing here at Action on Films Film Festival in Pasadena, California. So, Mark, you were telling me how what the things that you did to build the set for yes. the God Complex. I'd like to hear more about that. Well, this uh, this movie took us about two years to make. It's actually the Ben Hur of Paramount Pictures, which is my company, and we've turned it into this epic. And uh, we built a set in my backyard that was a three-walled set that we basically redressed every time we needed to use an interior. So we have, uh, like this represents a lot of houses in the Bible. We have Noah's house, we have uh, Abraham and Isaac's house, we have Joseph, Mary, and Jesus' house. Wow. Um, there's a few others. The Last Supper, we actually designed it to look like the restaurant for the Last Supper. And wow. every time we would just re dress the set. So we would tear down, let's say, the wallpaper that looked like brick and mortar, and then we would put up wood for, for the same area. And then we would tear that down and do something completely different. So you'd see, you'll see the same set about ten times throughout the movie, but it'll never look exactly the same each time. That's fabulous. And in fact, even one time it represents the exterior of the set, which you know, we, we kind of made it look like the outside because we put shrubbery around the edge and all that kind of stuff. You said this film took you two years to took film? Took about two years to shoot. So, what did you do in terms of weather when your set was built, you said, in your backyard, correct? Right, it was built in my backyard. And in California, it only really rains one month out of the year. So, we kind of worked it around that. And once we shot one location at one set, then it didn't matter if it rained because we were done with that set. So then, we would, when we were ready to shoot the next location, we would tear down whatever we had, you know, like wallpaper or cement or whatever we put up there, and then put up another one so it would be ready and fresh for the next time we would shoot there. And then we would go do some exterior stuff, we'd do some other stuff, and then when we were done with that, we'd come back and say, now it's time to shoot the Jesus, Mary, and Joseph section. So we will now set it up for that. And then, again, if it rains, it doesn't matter. In fact, one day we were doing the Last Supper, it did rain now that I think about it. And it actually started raining before we were set to shoot. Well, dribble, dribble, dribble. And then I said, well, maybe we're going to cancel it. But, praise Allah, it stopped. <laughs> the rain stopped just before we went and shot. And uh, we were fine with it. So. If you are deeply religious or spiritual or have any of that uh, you know, invisible sky daddy thing going on, don't see this movie. Because if you're Catholic, you will have to rush to confession. And you'll probably have to say like 10,000 Our Fathers and 10 thousand Hail Marys because the penance just won't be enough. Um, if you're Jewish, you'll have guilt for the rest of your life. If you are Muslim, you're going to want to blow up the theater. So if you're agnostic, atheist, or rationalist or anything, this is your movie. Okay, so what now? And now I don't want to wrap. I want to ask you another question. Oh, okay. What was your motivation for this film? Well, my, my original motivation was to entertain. I, I'm a filmmaker. I've been making films for 30 years. I enjoy entertaining. So that's number one. But this one kind of evolved into more of a messagey film. Although entertainment first, but a little bit of a message on top because I was brought up Catholic and uh, that kind of screwed me up for the first 15, 20 years of my life. Mm -hmm. And ultimately there were questions that I would be asking as a Catholic saying, well, wait a minute, this doesn't really make sense. Or why did this happen? Or why, why are you talking about it? So ultimately this movie came as sort of a catharsis for my uh, upbringing. But it's really to entertain. It. Do you have a blog? Uh, no, I have a website. You have a website? Have Do you have website. people commenting on the trailer or anything oh, yeah, like that? Oh, people comment all the time. Most of the reactions have been favorable. It's been in three festivals so far. It's been uh, banned by ten others, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, there have been a few people that are, you know, that have condemned me to burn in hell for making this movie. I have a sister who's very, very religious who refuses to see this or even acknowledge that it exists. Wow. You know, you've got something. Yeah. I made a movie a few years before about a giant ass that terrorizes Los Angeles. It's called Rectuma. That film she has no problem with. You know? So, But this one is a little too close to home for me. Mark, thank you so much for your time. That's a fabulous story. Thank you for sharing it with me. Thank you for uh, interviewing me. And now let me get another shot of the poster. Here it is, the guy complex. I am really looking forward to seeing it. Strong warning. Not suitable for children or the deeply religious. Technically the same thing. <laughs> <laughs>